take a couple questions from our, our uh, young friends here, the young brass players from the orchestra. Go ahead. So what's a normal day like for you in terms of practicing, mm -hmm. rehearsing, and performing? Sure. Uh, on like a normal Tuesday where we have, we generally have rehearsal in the morning and a concert at night that carries over from the week before. Um, I'll get out of bed between 7 and 7.30 and uh, take a shower, have breakfast, and then I do about 25 to 30 minutes at home, um, just down in my basement. And I do, I've got a, a routine of a mixture of Pierre Thibault and Vincent Chikowitz um, and uh, Michael Sachs. Um, but it's variations on the same thing. It's, you know, it's buzzing and long tones and, breath and breathing first before I do anything. Um, and working just enough flexibility and articulation in that I feel like I can kind of play anything throughout the day. So, and one thing I, I, I really try to do is play every horn that I have. So I play, I start on B flat and then I go to C and I play a lyrical etude on E flat trumpet. Um, and if I've got my rotary handy, I'll, 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 play, I'll play some scales or some, uh, some lip slurs on that. And I always finish with piccolo, um, just articulating some scales on piccolo to make sure everything's focused. And, um, call it kind of the, the fight club warm up so you're absolutely ready for anything that the day kind of throws at you. And then um, I have rehearsal and depending on how tough the week is, I'll come home uh, and I'll put about an hour to an hour and a half in um, just of etude work or solo stuff if I've, got, if I've got that going on. If it's a particularly light week, I'll give myself, um, I'll give myself a Top Tones or a Charlier uh, to kind of work on and I'll, you know, I'll try Sunday morning, I'll, I'll, I'll turn my camera on and, and play that and that's kind of my goal for the week if I've got don't really have a whole lot going on so but for like this week for the Artunian that's been obviously that's been on the stand for pretty much every practice session you know so and then that night uh, <clears throat> I'll get to the hall about 45 minutes early get a, a gentle warm up in and then um, touch some spots for the concert that night play the concert and then I'll get home and if I'm not too worn out and too exhausted too fatigued I'll play just about 10 or 10 or 15 minutes of some soft low long tones to make sure I'm balanced and set up for the next morning. So. Great. Um, I want to take one more from you guys, but could you quickly just talk about your passion for drum corps mm -hmm. and how that came about? And, and, and uh, cause I think that's surprising to some people to know that someone in the major <laughs> symphony orchestra has this huge attachment mm -hmm. and, and experience with uh, Drum Corps International. Yeah. Well, my father, Freddie Martin, founded the Spirit of Atlanta in 1976, and uh, I spent two summers marching under him in that organization um, early in high school after my freshman and sophomore years. Uh, and it was uh, extremely crucial to um, not just my work ethic, but kind of my concept of, of what true, consistent, reliable brass pedagogy is. <clears throat> because if, if for all, all, all of the, you know, the rumors and, and um, kind of misconceptions about what drum corps brass playing is, uh, if there's one thing you get out of it, it's repetition. And that repetition <clears throat> is the greatest key to success. The, the adage that I like to think of is, is the difference between simple and difficult and the difference between amateur and professional is just reps. And obviously you've got to put the work in to make those reps really high quality and to make them meaningful and effective, but that's the difference, is just reps. So. Um, I'm currently the brass co-caption head with the Cavaliers Drum and Bugle Corps out of Rosemont, Illinois, and uh, I, it's, it's something that um, most of my professional colleagues that don't know me that well are always surprised to find out because that, you know, the, the conception of what drum corps is is that it's, you know, it's not something music majors do. It's, in a, you know, it's something that you do for fun if you're not planning on ever majoring in music mm -hmm. because you can't march drum corps and ever play a brass instrument again. And, I marched three summers of drum corps, one of them at Fan Regiment, uh, after my freshman year at Northwestern. When some of my other, some of my other, co uh, my contemporaries in school were going off to PMF and Tanglewood and National Orchestra Institute, I was, I was marching drum corps. Um, and I think the other thing that I that I took from it that is really difficult to recreate is uh, how important the aspect of performance is. And it's not, and, and the reason why I love the, the Music for All National Festival is <clears throat> it gives you a taste of that same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's this really intense um, 
concentrated uh, rehearsal atmosphere for two days. And then, and these guys get two concerts, which is great. Usually in these environments, you get one, you get one shot. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is sort of what I think is, is special about both this, what these guys are able to be doing, and, and the drum corps activity, is it gives you that repeated uh, experience of what it takes to really put on a great performance when it matters, which I, tr you know, I was able to take with me into recitals and auditions and concerts in the BSO. So um, pedagogically and um, from a performance aspect, I think it's, it's something that's very special and should not be discounted uh, regardless of how much you want music to be a part of your life in the future, whether as an educator or a player or not at all. Mm. So. I was uh, very active in sports growing up, and um, I, you know, once I really started to focus on the trumpet, I, I turned away from organized athletics, uh, and that kind of competitive side of me was always wanting for something through high school and through college. And I played I played frisbee for the club team at Northwestern for a couple of years, and and I was okay, but you know, I was a I was a bench player. I'd come in off. I certainly wasn't a starter um, or anything like that. So that was still always something that needed to be nurtured and fed. And, um, and I found, you know, I was introduced to CrossFit through a high school friend uh, in 2009, now about five and a half years ago, and that was it. It was like I, I did, I did a single workout that was super simple. It had some, a little bit of running and push-ups and sit-ups and, and some squats, and it took about 12 minutes. And I thought I was going to die. I thought I was, I was ready to throw up all over the floor, and I didn't. Uh, but I, it was just absolutely the worst pain I had ever been in to that point. And uh, uh, and about 10 minutes after I finished, when I recovered a little bit, I was like, yes, I'm gonna, when can I come back and do it again? You were hooked. I was hooked. And I was going five days a week, and then after about a year and a half, six days a week, and now it's, you know, I, I think I go 27 or 28 days a month now. So wow, wow. Um, and and I, I love teaching, and I love, uh, you know, that's part of my outlet through, through drum corps, but also through... New England Conservatory and Boston University is is um, my passion for teaching. I absolutely uh, I love the engagement um, with uh, with younger players and younger uh, younger students, and uh, that's something else that I get through CrossFit. And so after after a few years, I I found that that was something I was very drawn to, and uh, felt it was something something I had to give back to the CrossFit community is uh, is coaching. So um, so I. Uh, Ended up coaching about, at my peak, kind of like 10 to 12 classes a week, which wow. was just way too much. Yeah. And uh, did that for about six months. And when I realized I had about 30 free minutes a day, I scaled that back. So now I'm doing, I, I coach about once or twice a week. And uh, But it's it's very similar to, to the same energy that, that I get with um, when I'm playing with, with these guys mm -hmm. or when I'm teaching at New England Conservatory or in Rosemont with Cavaliers. It's this, everyone's there for the same reason. Everyone's right. on the same page. And, there's this element of, of suffering and working together that brings everyone closer and really creates this great community. And uh, I think that's, that's what drew me to it in the first place and keeps me going through it. So, Fantastic. Well, I wish we could continue, of course. I mean, we've touched on a, a ton of great things, and you've, got, you've given us, the, our young friends here and people that will see this video, some amazing insight. I can't thank you enough for the Honor Orchestra of America for bringing you here, and thank you for spending some time with us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.